As you can see, we are in New Orleans for AHA 2016. There was a late-breaking session on pioneering the future of heart interventions, and we are here to talk about one specific presentation. It is an open-label, randomized, controlled, multi-center study exploring two treatment strategies of rivaroxaban and a dose-adjusted oral vitamin K antagonist treatment strategy in subjects with atrial fibrillation who undergo PCI, or Pioneer AFPCI. To do this, I'm with Dr. C. Michael Gibson, who is an MD and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and a renowned interventional cardiologist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Kim Eagle, who's the uh, editor-in-chief of ACC.org, he described your paper as an important but complicated trial. So let's see and start with the why first. Why did you do this particular study? Well, we have a lot of patients who have both AFib and who are getting a stent. And we have a lot of choices. That's what makes it so complicated. We have about nine combinations of different aspirin regimens, 17 thionopyridine combinations, 11 combinations of anticoagulants. You put it all together, we have 1,638 ways you could treat these people. That's what makes it complicated. Now, we do know doctors want to have some choices. They want to decide how long they treat the patient, one month, six months, or 12 months with dual antiplatelet therapy. They also want to make choices about clopidogrel versus ticagrelor versus prasugrel. We left that to them. What we did, though, is we then randomized patients to one of three foundation therapies. One was rivaroxaban, 15 milligrams once a day, about 25% lower dose than the traditional 20 milligram right. dose with the thionopyridine. We also randomized people to what I call baby dose rivaroxaban, 2.5 milligrams twice a day, plus aspirin and a thionopyridine. The third arm was traditional warfarin plus aspirin and a thionopyridine. And what we found was a very, very big drop in bleeding from 26.7% rates of clinically significant bleeding for warfarin plus aspirin and clopidogrel, down about eight or nine percentage points for the two different rivaroxaban strategies. The take home message is that you'd only have to treat 11 to 12 people to prevent one of those bleeding events. For hospitalization, you'd only have to treat 10 to 15 patients to prevent one recurrent hospitalization. That's a major improvement in terms of health economics. So how do the results compare with other trials that have been conducted? There's another trial called the Woost study where they also dropped aspirin. Uh, the difference between that trial and this trial is most people think Woost was an AFib trial. It wasn't. Only 69% of people in Woost had AFib, a lower rate than this trial. In Woost, they tried to treat for one year with warfarin triple therapy. We cut it down much more rapidly in this study. Only a quarter, well, only 22% of people were still on triple therapy at the end of the year. So we cut back on that therapy throughout the course of the year. Despite lowering warfarin duration, we still had a much lower rate of bleeding. So it's a little hard to compare the trials apples to apples and oh, right. oranges to oranges. So where is warfarin at this point? I mean, after going through this trial, What's your bottom line message for clinicians? Well, Deepak Bhatt wrote the editorial to this trial, and uh, the editorial was entitled The Beginning of the End of Triple Therapy. I think that pretty well summarizes his perspective. And I think when doctors see the reduction that they can achieve in bleeding, that'll enter into their calculation as to what the optimal therapy is for their patient. Oh, this is exciting, and this is, it's actually two different papers. There's one in New England Journal of Medicine that is simultaneous to the meeting here, and the other is in circulation? Correct. So the New England Journal papers, the main primary results, right. the bleeding endpoints, the primary bleeding endpoints, the circulation paper is the paper about rehospitalization, a very important economic driver of care. So is there anything else to know after this? There is, sure. There's, we could gather more information on the newer thionopyridines. They were not well represented in this study. We could get a, more information about the patient who needs triple therapy because uh, they had uh, just a medical condition, an ACS, and they needed triple therapy. So there's still some unanswered questions. But for your bread and butter stent patient, this is, uh, this I think it gives doctors a lot of information to consider. Well, this is the Pioneer AFPCI study. Please look at uh, not only the video here, but our coverage in CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions, where I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.